Welcome to the Kempe Podcast. My name is Mikko Kempe and this is just a short little intro to the actual episode that you will be seeing very soon. First, I wanted to just apologize that I messed up a little bit my guest I, a mic and so you might in about 30-40 minute mark hear a slight reduction on the audio quality. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. Hopefully uh, that won't take too much away from your enjoyment. Luckily the entire episode is still intact and you can enjoy it here. The other thing I wanted to clarify was is that in this episode we will be talking about what some would call a plant medicine or psychedelics or psychedelic substances and that I don't want you to take this type of conversation as some type of promotion of them especially for you personally. Uh, like we discussed this uh, and like my guest explains that these substances definitely should not be used or promoted for everyone and uh, there are obviously some type of legal issues you should be aware of as well in some countries as I understand some of these substances are legal in others they are not uh, these legal issues might even uh, vary depending on the different country you are in for example in the different states in the United States as I understand there are different kind of uh, legal rules about these substances and the use of them so you should be very aware of that and and, this, and the advice I also read in many places is that even if you did plan to use or consume any of these type of substances you should very carefully consider the set and the setting and your intention and why you would be perhaps using them. What I do find also very interesting and fascinating on the other side is that uh, myself for example I have studied to become a, th a therapist um, uh, and I have been very interested in all things related to biohacking which means sort of the idea of how to uh, maybe perhaps develop your mind and body and the connection of it and so uh, also it seems like there are already scientific evidence that suggests that maybe there are uh, legitimate benefits uh, or thera therapeutic benefits of some of these substances and so that's I think also on the other side very interesting idea that perhaps some of these substances could be used in a therapeutic setting to what I understand in some cases what I see from the some reported benefits even for perhaps potential amazing benefits so I think on the other side uh, we should not just dismiss uh, this type of conversation because maybe perhaps many of us have these kind of preconceived notions about uh, you know uh, labeling everything as basically harmful drugs and so with that said uh, also with the idea that uh, the, my guest here Benjamin has been studying uh, these type of substances uh, or what he calls plant medicines in the kind of original context with different shamans in Amazon in Peru and I think also perhaps perhaps there could be something we in the West for example could learn from having these type of conversations but I let you of course as always be the judge so uh, let me also know what do you think about this topic in general? Uh, please let's have a discussion about it uh, below in the comments. So if you have not already and you like these type of conversations, please subscribe to my channel. If you like this episode, uh, give it a thumbs up. And of course, like I said, let your opinion and view be heard in the comment section below. Also, if you would like, uh, I do have a Telegram group. It's mainly in Finnish, but you're welcome to join as well. There are very interesting debates and conversations about many subjects. I will uh, have the link for you in the des uh, text description uh, below. And uh, with that said, let's enjoy this fascinating conversation in the sunshine of tropical Bali uh, with the man who has been studying these plant medicine substances uh, in the context of shamanism for various, year, uh, various years. So, with that said, let's welcome Benjamin. Welcome to the Kempe Podcast. My name is Mikko Kempe and the whole intention of this podcast is for us to try to hack inside different fascinating minds and to discover together their unique perspective on life. Welcome. Let's start. In Kempe Podcast this time, 
we have a great pleasure to have as a guest, Benjamin. First of all, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for welcoming me into the podcast. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here. And as you can see, we are here like in a little secret location in Bali. And um, it was a, through a friend of mine, I, I, I spotted you and I was like, wow, you have a very interesting background. Uh, you, you came here kind of, if I understood right, like a little bit of a vacation. Yes. And then through certain circumstances, you kind of been now settling more or less a little bit more in here. But yes. And, and, and you do work in a psychotherapy and uh, you're an entrepreneur. And, but what I found fascinating was that I found out that you have a background in shamanism. Yes. Yes. And maybe we could start right there, that how from a France, from a guy from France, how first of all one gets introduced to a path of starting to be a shaman and maybe you can of course explain like how long you've done it and how did it all start? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a long, it was a long journey and same time it, it, it feels like uh, I started yesterday because um, <laughs> in, in this path of uh, uh, the shamanism that I've been practicing and the background that I have um, uh, with this tradition, it's, it's just y you start learning and then you go for another teaching and you go for another, um, um, uh, another way of understanding reality and then it, it feels like time passes just so fast. So yeah, I started 14 years ago in 2007 and I was introduced by uh, I was introduced by by many elements I would say in in my universe. But one prince, like one main thing that came to me was when uh, in 2004 2005 I had a, a profound a psychedelic experience with uh, with the psilocyb mushrooms, mm -hmm. um, and I just took them for fun. At that time, I was still in the corporate world. At that time, um, I'm. I'm I, uh, I came from like um, my family is in like uh, our business entrepreneur and my uh, everyone has been like uh, into into this world like for for all their life and myself I just went to business school I did uh, um, I did my time in corporate world and then at one point I had an experience and that experience um, in Europe in Amsterdam uh, took me to a journey. It turned me to a very deep journey of a connection with myself and I just wanted to know more about this reality and uh, and this reality and other reality, other dimensions. We were, like felt that I had access to uh, another part of the psyche where where we can um, where we can see deeper ourselves and um, and where we can understand better what basically we're doing on earth. <laughs> mm. So so it led me to uh, it led me step by step to uh, the plant medicine and I went to Peru uh, in 2007 to discover the medicine of uh, ayahuasca. Mm. And that medicine came to me, um, call it like uh, the abuela, the grandmother medicine. Um, and uh, I had an experience and that experience like, like threw me to a huge huge pass that opened for me at that time and I had no plan to just uh, entering into an apprenticeship and uh, from that moment I, I, I decided um, going back and forth in between uh, in between uh, France where I was living and Peru where the medicine could be practiced because uh, uh, that was one thing it's just we could not really practice in France but we could diet plants which uh, is one thing that I've been doing and I will explain a bit more about the concept of learning about plants, uh, with plants, spirit. Um, and yeah, for 14 years I've been just uh, back and forth and just in uh, many places teaching about the power of plants, uh, lecturing, um, giving like uh, different kinds of seminar where I could uh, give the seminars and we had, uh, um, that's been a journey, yes, profound journey. Yeah, well, I mean, there's already in my mind so many different directions we could go from here already. What comes to mind first is like, I guess what you're saying is that you think there's more to life than just the corporate world. Oh, yeah, uh, that's <laughs> it's what I'm sure. hearing. That's oh. for sure. It's that's that that was, you know, the, this is this is part. I mean, uh, 
for me, I just, you know, corporate world is corporate world. It, it has to exist somehow. What kind of corporate job? Well, I was just, I was in uh, a high tech, mm. uh, high tech uh, sales manager. Mm. Um, not nothing really, really special. I just was just traveling. I, I had like a, you know, a good income and a good uh, position. Um, I was uh, traveling international. I was covering. Uh, uh, I was covering um, um, all the Arabic countries and and, and traveling um, in Middle East. Well, I mean, I had like a great experience doing that, and it gave me. Uh, it just it gave me a perspective uh, of uh, um, of life. I I had the experience and I had like really the choice of like living where I could live, and and be where I could be. And that was always the one thing that has been defining my past. It's just I chose what I wanted to do, and uh, even if it took time, that was one affirmation that if I want something, I can manifest it. Um, and bring it into into my life yes yeah because i think it's interesting in, in in many levels there's i think on one hand the awareness of this kind of maybe some people heard it like i was i heard about it but but it, there's i think there's many kind of ways people think about it some people i like i remember myself thinking that you know the in, on my youth, let's say 17, I was or 15, I remember seeing on a school that that uh, this kind of on one lecture program saying that if you take marijuana, that's gonna lead you down to this path and you will the needle in the street soon, mm. homeless. Mm. And and I think uh, I don't know how you view. Do you th think that this kind of way in which in the West we you view drugs are they all the same? Uh, is ayahuasca somehow different? Uh, like, are, are, does it go into the category of like... The propaganda mm. is based on an uneducated society. Mm. We don't have any education about how using remedies of the nature. Um, all plants, I mean, all sacred plants, what we call sacred plants in my own language, uh, they have uh, properties, they have an essence, they have a spirit, and you have to learn to use them mm. and to work with them. So, for instance, you know, like now we have like cannabis, mm. for instance, cannabis. It's a, a huge distortion in the world. Mm. Why? Because in one part of the world today, they're like opening like a huge market for it to be sold and just... Um, uh, uh, it becomes uh, like a huge business in the US mm -hmm. and Canada and others. While when you are in Indonesia, for instance, here you could go to prison for 15 years for like being caught with, uh, mm. with like, uh, with like, you Where know, you 200 gram, like a my that's, that's, the, that's the law. And so there is a huge distortion and an uneducated mind in both sides. Mm. The first consider it dangerous because um, uh, it comes, like, for instance, Indonesia or Russia or places like this, mm -hmm. the Finland, Finland, Sweden, they will consider it like a dangerous, be dangerous because of, because of the side effect of it, and mm. because of uh, how people are somehow um, untrained and don't know how to use it, and uh, and it's clear that it can create like damages uh, into family and people, and I'm just like myself. I'm not a pro or against anything, uh, mm. just like I come into the natural way. But one thing that the common sense is saying is that all those plants have very deep potential and it is only what you, uh, um, what you wish for and how you're going to work with, with those plants, the intention you work with and what is uh, the motivation that you just like smoke or just mm. like ingest that is going to determine your experience and what you're going to get from it. Mm. So the one thing with the and, and on the other side, we have like we have an uneducated, huge uneducated country uh, about marijuana that is starting to be educated step by step. We're selling now marijuana like profusely, like it's just like you sell everywhere in the US, in Canada. And I was there like uh, a few years ago and I was looking at it and I was like, 
Well, man, it's like they have like laws that contradict completely. They have a federal law that is against it. You have a, on the other side, you, you have a, you have like a, the states that are like just making like a tax on it and just yeah, like yeah. get like a full business out of it. And in the middle, you have the consumer mm. that is uneducated mm. and either smokes too much or uh, just ma just take it as a medication. And you have a few doctors that are that are uh, uh, working with it and that are li licensed to yeah, prescribe, prescribe it. Yeah. Though the medicinal training of plant spirit, whatever, I'm not going to say plant spirit, I would say even if it is my language, I would say of plant administration is required. And mm. this is what we learn in shamanism. What I'm doing is a form of syncretism of, you know, um, the, what we have in in, in old shamanism and new psychotherapy and, and how you can just rule the world of the mind, the body and the spirit with the essence and the energy of plants and how you can just like truly get the full potential of their healing properties. Mm. Now, Regarding again, like I'm going to finish with cannabis, uh, which is like a huge, uh, huge um, topic. Yeah. Topic, but one thing is that we don't have education about that, and mm. what we are missing is that from the beginning, from the, uh, uh, the, the uh, at one point into the education of the people, we just like should really uh, take a time to explain what are plants. And there are specialists that could really, really help the people, to the, help the, young, the, the younger people to understand what is it that they have and how it works. And if they have the capacity to consume it or to do it uh, at a certain age, what is recommended and mm -hmm. how it's going to be for them. Because we think like repression will be just the one thing, either repression or too much liberty, too much freedom. And then we're like caught in between um, and generation, young generation, I see in my country in France, 13, 14, 15 years old, they just start smoking, they just start doing things and that are nonsense, mm. but they find a sense of freedom and then they lost it because they get addicted. Mm. Um, so I would say everything is ruled with education, mm. with proper education. Whatever you're going to take, you know, medicine can be poison mm. when it is not on the right dose. Mm. So um, we understand with the, I understood and I just worked with shamanism for many years, looking at every resource can be a poison for you, whatever is the resource. And this is important to understand how to rule your world and have the structure to manage the resource. Then the resource becomes fruitful for you. Mm. Um, you don't need like, a, um, and even like a, a certain kind of poison that you find in the nature mm. becomes a really, really medicine in a small dose. Mm. And they become like, a, they become a, a medication, they become like a, um, a, a different, um, a different property with different properties and different remedies. And we administrate them already, you know, allopathic medicine. Mm. Um, now, one thing that I think that is really important to understand is that um, the one thing that can completely change the entire perspective around uh, psychedelic and uh, ayahuasca, mushroom, psychedelic medicine is education. Education. It means really education, information, and this is what I intend myself to do and mm. what I have been uh, doing in my own way with the tools that have been given to me by the tradition that I practice. So what, uh, what I'm hearing is that you think that plants can really heal and, and, and help people. Uh, what, uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that, is that uh, maybe you can go into your, your journey of, of, of you, you said you had been studying in Peru. Like what, what does it mean? How, what does it mean to study with the, with the shamans? And, and what kind of maybe you can give some kind of maybe your personal experience of what do you have gotten from, like what kind of healing or what kind of knowledge or information you gotten from some of your, your personal experience? Yeah, so, so um, yeah, first your question, can plants heal? Yes, of course they can. 
Um, but again, it's on the base and the rules of the person that are ingesting those plants. Mm. And uh, the administrator of the plant, or the one that administrates the plant. So when you go for learning with the plants, the first thing you do is you cleanse your body, you cleanse your mind, you clean your spirit. And like, like it's the first years of med school, I would say, but in the jungle, and just you come and, and the first things that you do is that they give you plants mm. to really clean your mind and clean. Like, like how many, what kind of plants? And like so they have different kinds of plants. They have um, um, plant and tree spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, those plants, we call them master plants or master trees. Uh, and they like some examples, like which uh, kind of would be considered? Um, that would be one that is called Jatropha curcas, which is the Pignon Blanco. Then you have another one that is uh, Mansoa Calisae, that is like Arosacha, the wild garlic. Um, you, have, uh, you have plants. You have plants like uh, like huge trees of the Amazon, um, um, called Chihuahuaco, for instance, and use it like for certain part of the body, certain part of the mind, and uh, the Sanangos, uh, Unia de Gato, mm -hmm. which is like all those plants are very cat's claw. Was that cat, cat's claw? Yes, yeah, that's the only one I, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I recognize. Yeah, yeah. Unia, that Unia de Gato, <laughs> cat's claw. Yeah, this is uh, they are master plants. They are mm. plants that. Uh, that are used to heal different kinds of uh, disease, mm. illnesses, wherever you are in your psychology. They work on, on, in the shamanism, in the shamanism practice, they work on many different levels of consciousness. Uh, and uh, they work on the physical part, so you have physical property, and you have on the psychology, and you have a um, uh, psychological part, emotional part, and they work on the spiritual part which is the, the most unknown of our like modern uh, medicine, the spiritual part where all the causes and the roots of our disease are located. Mm. So, and this is where uh, the medicine, what we call the medicine, the sacred medicine, um, of uh, the plant of ayahuasca comes in the picture because she becomes, she then comes as a, a supra consciousness that puts you in a frequency where you can observe how works the plant spirit and then apply their energy through frequency, vibration, and rhythm to the people that come, are, um, that, are, uh, uh, that came to heal themselves. Um, and, I, and I went through that myself with many, many different kinds of plants. Um, and yes, the first years is like uh, first years of med school, you know, in the jungle. And, and uh, you, it, it's not easy because you go really for the experience of healing yourself. It's like we go to med school and the doctor will just uh, desiccate your body in front of everyone and just would say, okay, this is an example of how you have to do the surgery. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening, basically. And, um, but in a, in a more subtle way, in a way uh, where the physical body is touched by vibration and, and, and rhythm, intentions and prayers. Mm. And applying the juice of certain plants with restriction, fasting, diet um, during a few weeks, a few months, and, certain, and sometimes a year. Depriving yourself from sexual energy and yes. That's the preparation for what, what kind of healing would you say? Uh, or let's say you go to some of your own first experiences. What did you, what did, what did you experience or what like was maybe i guess i could imagine so powerful that you felt like okay i'm going to be doing this now for the next i don't know you've been doing now 14 years uh in 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 some some way or fashion so w what kind of what kind of like um healing you you felt like you you got from it the first thing is that uh when i got to the jungle i I got to see, I got to see my, 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 my construction, who I was and how I built myself and how I, 
like I created my thoughts, yes, belief systems. my all the belief systems, the core belief, the one that are just like <coughs> really anchoring us into a role, into a social role, into uh, an emotional role inside of the so society, mm. into being one person in regards of, in between one personality in regards of other personalities mm. and how you interact with reality in general, how it serves you and how it's not serving you. So step by step, I had like the experience. I, I lost my mother when I was like a, a young child. And uh, the, the first experiences were about that, were mm. about um, how you basically uh, experience life without having a mother mm. and, and how you heal that part like 30 years later, mm. entering into, uh, entering into a, a work with plant spirit. Mm. And yeah, it gave me a lot of information and it gave me the information is one thing information is something like from the mind you know mm -hmm. like, okay you get information but the experience you re-experience you re-experience and you get into an experience of your trauma mm. your fears and uh, this took me out of all medication <coughs> in like three to four years I stopped any kind of medication that I Got. Like what kind of? Medicine? I was I was on antibiotic like mm. for like all my life until 27 years old. Okay. I was uh, 27, even 30 years old. I was taking antibiotic like every year. Oh wow! Right. Yeah, you get the, you get the flu and just I had like a, you know regular flu mm -hmm. coming and antibiotics and I was allergic to uh, many different things and uh, I would have like stomach aches. Uh, uh, many different things, right. you know, I was just like drinking, Physical drinking too much sometimes uh, in the social environment when you drink a lot, when you eat a lot of fat and food. For years, I just changed my food diet completely because mm. that's the first intake of energy inside of your body. And that's the first thing that the medicine is teaching you is how to feed yourself properly. Mm. How the food is um, is already a medicine for you mm. and how you taking your own nutrients and medicine inside of the food mm. so um, uh, it took a long time but it took me to really really uh, see um, see how I could um, change my change my diet and when I changed my diet I started changing my mind when I changed my mind I changed my life and I started manifesting a better reality for myself step by step yeah by manifesting reality you mean that how you what you think about your own life and what you want and you start to see more possibilities and options for yourself in that kind of way manifesting reality or what do you mean by ah, okay yeah so reality? now now we're going to come to the point where i am today so <laughs> basically what what's that's what i'm i'm teaching and this is what where i'm helping people so uh, just for you to understand, it's just like one thing is that plant spirits, ayahuasca, and, and all those uh, medicine just teach you one part for uh, one part of of um, uh, one part of how you built life, how you built your own life. But the the best and, and the, the core and the essence of the teaching is how you can go for self-realization mm. how you can embody your true self which is a creator mm. he is a creator and that creator has the tools to manifest a different kind of reality so all the work i'm doing now it is not especially anymore with just like drinking plants but it is more about what it gave me as a tool as uh, an inner medicine as uh, tools for psychotherapy, for uh, guiding people through uh, food diet, plant diet, and, uh, and uh, um, without necessarily ingesting mm. um, uh, psychedelic medicine or sacred plants, just by being very aware, present of their thought, of their mind, of what they're thinking, what is the pattern behind, and just working to be a manifester of your reality and no, not to be submitted by the reality that you see with your, that you see and perceive with your senses. Mm. Because those, what you see is what you create. Mm. 
and from from tell a vision y- yes so yes. instead of instead of being yes subdued by uh, a certain somebody else's vision yes you get to choose to this is an hypnotic reality mm. you know it's just uh it's just a it's just a frame a very beautiful decoration for the experience of uh, of humanity for like the human experience mm. from the perspective from the perspective what i have been exploring for many many years and this is such a beautiful experience and and we are carrying so much pain and so much suffering inside of this experience mm. and what we are inside of uh, what we call in you know many different ways like a karma you are on you are on your path and you just like accumulated experiences and and they are compressed in the body in the mind uh, in the physical realm but also in the spiritual realms and uh, i have been encountering uh, uh, um, uh, a part of my true self and and that has been the really the teacher the master my own guru of how you can by applying different ways in your life and how you can just apply uh presence and uh, uh routines and certain disciplines just make it a really healthy and happy life for yourself and for the people surrounding you mm. i want to go i want to go back to you guru a little bit uh, but before i i thought that some people who may be watching or listening to this might think that well if this would really be so good uh, and if this really could be healing for me why wouldn't it be already in the news or why wouldn't it why wouldn't uh, why would this kind of if if I'm what I'm getting right is like precious important knowledge uh, wh- why would it have been lost like this or or how do you see maybe you can go also a little bit on the history of how it, wh- where did this knowledge come from yeah there's um, a lot of a lot of, a lot so of questions on one y- y- yes. and let me check this make sure we are good yeah um yes so i'm i'm going to start by by your last question uh which is where this knowledge come from um so there is many origins to uh to the medicine to the traditional medicine and to the tools that it gives um the one thing that we know about the tradition that I've been practicing and and I I, I want actually um I'm, I'm I'm dedicating a part of like even yep, of what I'm saying now today like to to the to the Shipibo Konibo mm. tradition and uh, to the to 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 the teachers that uh, came uh that were in, in my past and just transmitted that knowledge I'm I'm been so humbled by their knowledge and by the potential of healing that they revealed to me through the medicine and through their songs and mm. ikaros um so this medicine um to the shipibo konibo was transmitted by the to the by the uh the incas mm mm-hmm. the incas uh were the one that came and revealed the secret of how you combine those two plants the vine of ayahuasca and the uh the plant of chacruna how you boil them or you cook them and how they can reveal to you the mysteries of universe and more than that just how they and can yeah and that seems to be a mystery i i heard and read somewhere that like that the one of the is it is it the vine i don't know or the other plant that it looks like a normal just a regular green leaf that how did they know to take that one and then then the wine and then boil it what is it eight hours or something to make this brew I, it seems like a already a mystery yeah 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 it's if you look at the, if uh, jeremy narby was talking about it in the cosmic serpent he was mm. saying in his book cosmic serpent it's like it's like the chance of combining like when you have 20000 species of plant in the amazon and combining the two plants mm. is, it's it's billion of combination right. with um, um and to boil it eight hours to yeah <laughs> exactly how it is it's, it's just you know ancient shamanism we didn't get the information the mm. way we were getting mm. now we're getting information by looking on you know on a phone well, on cool. facebook or just look opening a book and just uh, okay the book says it is like this we mm. have like a but the, the the books were like in a in, in a very jungle. different realms it was in the jungle in the nature 
and mostly how they receive that knowledge. If we understand the Inca that were already that were in civilization, advanced civilization, and had understood already the medicine of uh, ayahuasca and chacruna and how to combine them and get them into uh, a juice, a tea that would just uh, give a, a visionary mm. uh, brew. And uh, um, it's uh, many legends around it. Mm -hmm. Some before ayahuasca, there was tobacco. Mm. Tobacco first master plant, like roots of the master plants. Mm. It's used in the old world as a master plant. We, we perverted it. Or me, Western me smoking, world, yeah, we cigars. perverted, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, I would say that's the, actually that's one of the best forms still cool, of yeah. tobacco. I like cigars, yes, Cohibas yes. from but Cuba. Yeah, they, they, I mean, this is still it's one still of... still come from, it's still natural. It's, yeah, it, it's still one of the best forms to, 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 okay, good to, to, uh, to uh, I would say, to approach tobacco. But tobacco in, in general was just like, it, it's a shamanic master plant. This mm -hmm. is the one plant that rule a part of all the world of the plants. Mm. It has, a, it is a food for the plant. It is an energy for the plant, and it is how they cook it. And there is tabaqueros over there, tabaqueros mm. in the Amazon, who are shamans that are only using tobacco. Wow! Not going with ayahuasca or anything. They're just using tobacco. I am myself a tabaquero, just working many, many years, like from the beginning. Uh, that was the first spirit that just really came to me and that I really uh, started interacting mm. as, as, a, as, as an entity mm. discussion that we and I got to, uh, to encounter. And tobacco is cooked into this very dark paste mm. oh, yeah. in the Amazon. It's very, very potent. It just they will take like a little bit and put it like a chic here under the teeth and um, you could disappear into uh, an experience. Jeremy Narby actually is just also Jeremy Narby in his uh, The Cosmic Serpent is, is also describing one of his experiences where he's completely go for like six hours of psychedelic wow. experience just with the, with the power of, uh, of tobacco. Mm. Uh, and uh, they're using uh, Rustica. Why I'm talking about this? Uh, Nicotinia Rustica, which is the, the, uh, one, the, the one potent tobacco from mm. the Amazon. Uh, my point is, from this place, uh, we know that the psychedelic effect of tobacco would have given like a dream to the shamans how to combine those two plants. Mm, that's like a legend. Yeah. Yes, that's mm. the legend. But on my perspective and what I've heard, but also m on my own experience, knowing how the plant spirit uh, work and how you receive information, I can completely see that during during a dream or meditation, you could receive a complete mm. recipe and dialogue about how to combine those plants, where to find them, wow. and how to just bring them together. Based on your own experiences. Based on my own experiences. And I have, it's basically I have experienced myself what the the what the shamans of that time, mm. the priest of that time, Inca priest of that time, would have themselves received as a dream, um, as a dream. And, and then they came to the Shipibo and said, this is the way you have to do it. Mm. So do you think we humans control plants and nature or the nature and the plants use and control us? You know, that depends of your level of awareness of consciousness. The, the, the reason I'm saying is because like, I've heard about this idea. Or there's also, I think, Noah, I forgot his last name, wrote the, was it the Sapiens book where he got this idea that, okay, wheat is maybe the most cleverest plant because he's been multiplying all over, maybe the most. And I started thinking that because one time I got, of course, many people might know that I've, I've been interested in kind of superfoods and plants and health and I remember the moment when uh, I started maybe using a lot of medicinal mushrooms like a medicinal one the reishi shaga all these yes. lions man I started using a lot like uh, daily a little bit a little bit a little bit and then I remember one day when I'm planting in uh, like a forest like reishi and lion's mane 
and I'm, I'm planting kind of like in the wild, you know, uh, my own. And then the thought came to me, why am I doing this? Wait a second, was this my idea? That, or was it like me consuming these medicinal mushrooms, having me, having me now coming to here and plant some more? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I would say uh, there is a, in, in the nature, there is not something that controls another thing. Mm. It's just things that come into symbiosis. Okay, right. You know, as right. homeostasis of nature. Basically, mm. um, if we are connected to nature, nature will, like, if we are connected in a proper way, what is the proper way? Okay, if we are connected to nature, is that we make an effort to be in contact with the plants, feed them, give them water, being around, being around it, take care of the nature, nature, t nature. Take Okay, take care of us. Take care of us. Right. This is the prayer. That's mm. the, that's how it works, and and we have that, you know, we have that hunger inside of us. We want more and more and more. We find something and we want more and we want more and we want more. When we want more, sometimes this is there is a hungry beast inside of us that needs something. Mm. Step by step, you can tame the beast by just understanding how those resources of nature can just like balance your entire system mm. then i would say no one controls anyone is it's it works by itself mm. the <laughs> the human being wants to control everything <laughs> you know and and our intelligence can either control and create or control and destroy mm. um, the one big, big, big issue we have in the world right now, it is the management of our resources, like resource management. Mm. We suck at it. I just will say like this, you know, the entire world now we are completely managing the resources in a very, very negative way for our planet. In what kind of way? Like what kind of examples? Means we abusing the resource. Mm. So abusing the resource the resource starts abusing us mm. and this is this is the one thing is is you know we call it like we can call it like i say it is the cycle of nature nature recycle everything we are not very um we we are not very sustainable for that planet mm. for now and as a human being as a human race we're gonna just evolve to another type of being which is more caring to the resource that he has. Why? Because at one point the resources are going to disappear. They're going to just make like, they're going to be so rare and creating disease, what we have now, creating like a kind of disease, creating like a frenzy and just like a madness into the world. Disease of, of the mind. Yeah, disease with the mind. The mind is the disease. This is. Yeah, this is. And this is this is this is what we <laughs> this is what we're going through right now this is uh, this is part of the huge crisis mm. we have not managed our resource well and then things are just like volatile they just you know whoever have created you know whatever we we call viruses or anything you know this like so many conspiracy theory about how it is and all this it's it's not really important to know and i just like really really want to say to the people just don't get too much into those theory or whatever just get your diet clean mm, get, get yourself get yourself like a line don't get attached and too too much to whatever you see outside this is a part of reality that mm. will disappear from the uh, at one time from the moment you start working on yourself, don't blame or shame whatever you see outside because you're responsible for that reality that you're creating and mm. how you came here on that, on that planet mm. and how what you're doing. It is self-responsibility, self-sustainability uh, uh, is the key to self-abundance and self-prosperity. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah, so it's of resources. Yeah, so it's important to really be careful of where do you put your focus and attention and what do you think will become a reality? Because that which you kind of think, what I mean is that that there might be some people who see the world right now through a certain lens, right? And thinking, oh my God, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And if you just think that, that actually, are you saying that you are kind of part of creating that? So instead of instead of becoming very 
like grounded and finding what kind of create what kind of reality you want to create in the world and 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 focus more on on that because as you said in the one point that you are the uh, the creator and you can manifest your reality yes and and at the same time as you are the creator in one certain frequency that we in religious in the religious we call you know god which mm. is the universal consciousness the u- universal creation um um, and we call it in many names, like mm. you know, in science or or, or esotericism or uh, um, um, uh, spiritualism. You know, like many different different ways. But there is one point which is connected to the the pr- creation principle of creation. And I would say uh, there is like uh, some tools to just like get yourself closer to that vibration, mm. to your to your. To, to the creator, I would say, mm. and to have like that step by step getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. With that said, I'll take a little more cacao. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> oh, like, uh, yes, isn't sure. uh, isn't cacao also is mm. used in the ceremonies in some parts of the South America and cacao is uh, mm-hmm. cacao was actually one of the it was uh, it's one of my was favorites. Cool of the, yeah, that's it's uh, okay. Cacao is a medicinal plant. Yeah, also. Yeah, it works on the heart, physical mm. heart, and uh, it opens. Uh, it's uh, it's like a pump. Mm. It's like a pump, and it's the uh, it's higher the level of serotonin in body. Just and you can have like with very high dose of cacao, you can have a psychedelic experience too. There is like cacao ceremony actually. Yeah, I, I've been to. I beat a couple. Yeah, yes, cacao. yes, very, very it's beautiful. beautiful uh, very beautiful plants also. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, what we're saying? Um, no, we were saying. Well, I, I will take on that. Uh, I mean, what, one of the one of the next things I want to do is find a cacao and uh, like ah. a plant that myself on the uh, on the yard, oh, like uh, yeah, yeah. like my own cacao tree, yes, you know. And yes, some people should. who know my podcast, they kn- I usually always drink with guests cacao and so and and it's from one f- good company from finland now, but now i'm trying to upgrade kempes cacao you know okay. like <laughs> let's okay. see how I, that goes I, I i know one of the best cacao in the world oh yes. yeah you have to help me in to Peru. get get yeah. yeah get like uh here i want to grow yes. my own, own, own yes. tree yes. Yes. for yes. sure yes. for yes. sure one of the strongest best quality ever I've yeah been encountering like it's uh for the inca it was like gold they were using yeah. it yeah it's money. money also yeah, yeah. As a money yeah Yes. No, that's 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 beautiful. No, uh, we we can go maybe a little bit. Um, I wanted to ask this a lo- long time ago that that if if you go a little bit into the land of kind of I mean, maybe, maybe this information for many can sound already like so kind of out of the ordinary experience of of many people. That how can you kind of even I I'm listening. I need to digest kind of what I'm. What I'm hearing, like, what, what what do you mean by everything? And for you, through your experiences, I'm sure you have a, like a, your own perspective, of course. But what I wanted to ask was that maybe you could share. I don't know. Comes to mind, like some kind of what is like a some crazy uh, shaman experience when I imagine you are in a jungle with uh, with uh, like some kind of uh, uh, masters who been doing this whole life uh, digesting different plants, like. Uh, is there something kind of uh, maybe it can be maybe a funny story or some kind of memorable to you that you were like whoa that maybe for audience it's okay to feel like nah, I don't even I believe can, I can just share one thing that I mean there's many problems uh, yes yes <laughs> that, that would take like two or three books <laughs> um, but um, um, one experience I can share is that I had uh, this very deep and profound experience, and this you cannot invent it. You just like it's one experience where where you ingest the medicine and and describe where you were. Where, where so, are you now? So the Amazon, the, the Amazon in, when you are in the Amazon, mm-hmm. it's the setup is like uh, it's eight thirty at night eight eight mm-hmm. between eight and nine in the jungle in the jungle you are in the jungle it's a center a place with like huts mm. jungle huts jungle tambos we call them they're like the huts of diet the re- you retire with yourself for mm. a few days few weeks few months depending 
uh, how long you're gonna go for the process of the diet. Uh, we call it dieta over there in Shipibo Sama. Um, and you go inside of uh, and at, at so every night or every second night there is a ceremony. You don't always participate when you're on a diet to the ceremonies, but when you participate, there is this ambient, this energy. It's like night is coming, stars appear in the sky, you have the moon, and the frequency, the vibration is switching. Your body remembers already the experience, and your body is already under this frequency. And the only thing that you are like feeling, it is it is this deep dark night that is completely resonating inside of you and you can just feel that you can feel this touch this frequency of the jungle that start like with all the sounds of the jungle it feels the jungle is already speaking to you and you have this round house in the middle of the center where we are going and just joining and, and and that night I remember, I remember that my teacher, which is a, a very brave, courageous man with a, a very beautiful talent to uh, open a self-realization process inside of the people, it, it, took, it took us to, to the place and he was not really happy with the, his uncle that had brewed the medicine a few days ago and that, that made it like not really effective, not really potent for the people. So he, he told him, if you, if it's, it's, it's elder, but he's the master. So he said to him, if you truly want to stay working with me, you have to make the people that are coming, you have to get them an effective medicine that would work for them to really have a profound healing experience. And uh, so the old man just gave all what he had. He's like 80 years old. He gave like all of his knowledge, everything of what he had, and put all his heart to prepare the perfect brew. So that night, um, when I entered into the, the space, from the moment I enter into the space, I, I saw the bottle that was over there, and I was just, I, 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 I just wanted to just go out and the maloka and just like run back to my <laughs> but I was like, I'm not going to do that. It's not possible because my before drinking, my whole heart, my whole body, my whole mind would just like feel exactly what was over there just could see I would say it's like the animal force inside mm -hmm. that is the instinct is just perceiving where it's gonna go and there is a part of this instinct that's gonna be dissolved so you can just go to another step so that night I sat in front of the in, in front of uh, the, the shaman and he gave me a cup and when he gave me a cup there's like this thick material came out of this, <laughs> uh, very dark. And when he poured the cup, I already felt a very deep uh, effect mm. of, of like psychic effect opening. When I drank, it was burning, burning all my throat and just until my, I think, I, I'm talking about this like 12 years ago in the Amazon, 12, 13 years ago. I went back to my seat and he took me not like, you know, we say, oh, you ingest it and, you know, ingest a, a plant or anything. You ingest and an effect come after a half an hour, 45 minutes. In that case, it took me five to six minutes. It, it was not even like a, di a digested effect. It was the energy that was already there. And I, uh, I, 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 I let it go. I vomited just. And when I vomited... I disappear into another dimension. I was sitting, I could feel my physical body, but I woke up in another place with my physical body. Mm. And in that space, that was the, I had the, the experience of, uh, of looking at the, the mother tree of the earth, the tree of life, which was represented by a huge tree. It was very physical. 
and and I saw the creation, thousands of spirits of the earth and how they were creating that reality and what was behind that reality. And um, I was there for a little while and I, I, I had this voice telling me, there are worlds, there are worlds and spaces where your mind cannot go. And my mind was dying step by step. I was seeing my mind completely dissolving and another part of me just opening. Mm. That was one of the most profound experience of how I got into uh, into this place, mm. um, into this medicine. So for me, I was over there for like maybe, I don't know, four, five, six hours. And, um, and to tell you how time dissolves. And, and then I started coming back from that realm that was like, amazed and then the master started chanting it means he started the ceremony oh. it was already all, only like 30 minutes 25 minutes oh. and I, I there was with without the guidance of the chant it was just in the silence just experiencing one of the deepest until today uh, experience i had i had wow. leaving my this reality to go to another with my conscious mind mm. wow well, we're also getting a lot of light here. I know, I'm starting to feel it and I know you, you have to go. I think maybe final thing could be that uh, to explain like in this situation, in the world situation we are, like what kind of message would a shaman or Shibibo elder uh, tell in this? Is you already kind of touched upon this idea that we can manifest our own reality if we remember we are the creators. But what kind of uh, message or ask or if you have anything you want to ask from my podcast audience or what would you recommend them to do or what would you leave them to be inspired with what what would it be uh, so pursue the path of the heart but this is a, a general you know a general affirmation um, because this is where you will find fulfillment and an agreement with yourself with everything you're doing and uh, in those times just seek help mm. everywhere you can seek help uh, with um, uh, psychologically seek help like uh, with don't, don't let anything of the past just uh, eat you alive mm. this just take time to just look at yourself just learn to breathe learn to eat just watch your diet do some sports do some yoga uh, take some time to really uh, read good information. Just cut the phone, cut the Facebook, cut the like li like listening to camper podcast or yes, for instance, <laughs> like listen to good podcast. Yeah, to good podcast, good information, good energy. It is because you can choose whatever yeah, you want yeah. to take. What makes you feel good? You know. I mean, media are serving us like lots of things. Mm -hmm. So just uh, th there is there is a panel. Like I say, we for me, I, I see. I see life like a like a stage, you know, mm. and, and it's this like huge movie, and there's the director, there's the actors, and there's like <laughs> the different like uh, people. Just I, I would say, uh, play your own role. What what you would like to play? You have the choice. You're on the set. Either you go for like dark things and just like uh, procrastinate and mm. do things that are not going to serve you, and just you're going to do things that are like just going to put you into stress, and you're going to put into uh, 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 and, and, and you're just going to create again more like those experiences of suffering, of pain and uh, for how long it's going to serve you, you know, it's, it's up to you. Or you're going to just really, really get interested and say, okay, I have some fears, I have some anguishes, I might like really seek some coaching, some help. Mm. So there is many course online, there is many different things that you can do. There is, uh, oh, today, uh, there is like intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. there is keto diet, mm -hmm. uh, there is like a vegega vegan, vegetarian mm -hmm. diet. You know, eat whatever you feel it's good for you. You know, meat, no meat. I won't say, you know, turn into a, a vegetarian, mm -hmm. but just take your time to really look what is good for yourself. Do something good for yourself and you do it for humanity at the same time. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I, 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 this, I had a couple of mentors a long time ago that this idea of like, seeking information if you want to be happy study happiness you know yeah. i remember one jim Rohn. Yeah. he said that i'm like 
yeah why not make a happiness a study i never thought yes. about it or yes. or like let's say if you want to be energetic study health yes. and yes. i'm thinking to myself oh my god study plans study remedies yeah. you know take your time to really get into it and if one day uh the medicine is really 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 calling you just go and do the experience where you can where you are sure that you are guided mm. if actually uh if it is uh i I myself would be really honored to guide the people if they're looking for a good place where they can just mm. ingest medicine in Peru, in the Amazon, with proper people, proper shamans. Mm -hmm. and, and also ourselves, we're organizing once or twice a year retreats in the Amazon where mm. we're bringing people to really look and learn about plant spirit, how it works. It's small two weeks initiation that mm -hmm. we're doing where um, uh, where we ingest the medicine for those uh, couple of weeks and um, yeah and bringing them into uh, into uh, into the the highest of the of the person of their personal experience mm. I would say it is not made for everyone mm -hmm. though what we go through inside of the medicine from what I see the whole world is gonna go through in the next Mm -hmm. in the next generation, mm -hmm. in the next 20, 25 years that we have to live. And it might be shorter than we think. Because we go through a transformation and it's time to prepare. Yeah, and if you want to go faster, you go through inside already. You and go inside. And you then can only manifest from the inside. Mm. Whatever you're going to try to do outside is just impulsed by the inside. So mm. you fix yourself inside and you fix your reality outside. Well, that's a beautiful, you fix your things inside and you fix your reality outside. I think there's a beautiful message to end and I will uh, put like on the show notes all the links if people want to follow you. I don't know if you're on social media, but I, anyway, we'll, we'll talk and I'll find the information you want to put on the show oh, notes yeah, for people. If inform people, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. That's yeah my, that has been my past for 12 years. I'm mm -hmm. really, really happy to just uh, bring people to, to self-awareness. Yeah, yes. yeah. And so people can find you. And uh, from this, uh, thank you for watching and listening and uh, pleasure, Benjamin. And maybe we'll at some thank point... Thank you, Nicole. It's ho a great pleasure also. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we will m meet again and maybe we'll do a part two at some point. You know, people yes. have see what people think about this, this episode. But uh, everybody, thank you for listening and watching and uh, make sure to subscribe. And if you like the episode, help us out. Put a thumbs up and that always helps. I'm, my podcast is still still growing and evolving so all the support is uh you know appreciated a lot so thank you thank you benjamin for thank sharing you. all your all your all your thoughts and wisdom yes with that to the next episode thank you very much for joining my podcast make sure to subscribe to my channel and if you like the episode make sure to give it a thumbs up do join our conversations and comment and share these videos forward thank you once again and see you on the next episode